The Supremacy of Jesus Christ A study of the book of Colossians chapter 1, verses 15 through 20. This is the Sunday School Reference Application for Sunday, the 5th of February, 2023, of the Winter Quarter of the Church of God in Christ Legacy Study Series, and is Lesson 10, of New Study Unit 3, that has a focus theme entitled, Imitating. Jesus. The focus theme of the 2022-2023 Winter Quarter Legacy Study Series is still God, and Jesus the Christ, but in this study unit we want to add, to that phrase, 
two words, and they are in us. You see in Unit 3 our goal in this winter quarter unit study is to teach students of the Holy Bible that they are included by faith and through faith in the works of the Lord God through His Son, Jesus, the Christ, who is abiding in them daily. Jesus said, Greater works will we do here on earth than He did. Yes my sisters who might doubt the possibilities of God working through you to accomplish greater works than he did through his own son Jesus Christ is real. Yes my brothers, who say in your hearts. Who me? Greater works. Are you kidding me? Are you sure he was talking about me? Have you seen my life lately? Perhaps Jesus was talking about somebody else completely. But he was not talking about my raggedy life. Listen up, my brothers and sisters. Jesus made that statement. In St. John chapter 14, verse 12. And he was talking about you and I. The church body of believers that believed in him. Jesus, the Christ. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father, John 14 12. Please note the words. He that believeth on me. And accept the fact that Jesus was talking about you and me. And that he expects greater works from us in our daily holy walks with him. No excuses. No exclusions. Greater works are expected of you and me. Can you say amen? So in this study unit 3 we want to add to our central theme. God and Jesus the Christ, in us, the reason is God being God, and Jesus being the Son of God, most certainly is in a select class of being, for which you and I full of iniquity, and condemned to die a sinner's death in the flesh, can never obtain with our flesh, in our wildest imaginations, or dreams, yet, Jesus said, we were going to do greater works, here on earth, than he did, how is this possible, the answer is simple, Jesus the Son of God does the work in us, and through us, by giving us his comforting Holy Spirit, which is the same Holy Spirit of God, sent by his Holy Father, in heaven, that John the Baptist mentioned in the book of Saint Matthew, chapter 3, verse 11, and 16, also mentioned in Saint John chapter 1, verse 32, the Holy Ghost Spirit of God runs through the holy veins of the living God, and runs through the holy veins of the living Son of God, which is Jesus, the Christ, and also sinners like you, and I, when we accept Jesus, the Son of God, Jesus, the Christ, as our personal Savior, and is filled with the Holy Ghost Spirit of God, hallelujah, that same Holy Ghost Spirit like holy blood, flows through our spiritual veins, perfecting our individual spiritual bodies, yes, then we can live holy every day, perfected by the Holy Spirit of God, flowing through our holy veins, as we allow the Spirit of God, in us to do marvelous, and wondrous works and miracles, which we could not do as ordinary condemned sinners, ready to die, and burn in hell. Our Sunday School students motto is from 2 Timothy 2.15. Study to shew thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Today's Bible Truth Jesus Christ is preeminent. Jesus Christ is first in everything, first in importance and relevance, first in honor, first in exaltation, first in leadership of the church, and the beginning of Christianity, because he was the firstborn Christian. Today's memory verse. Colossians 1.19. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. Lesson name. After participating in this lesson, all participants should be able to Understand, Paul's description of Jesus Christ's supremacy. Express, feelings of amazement at the supremacy of Jesus Christ. Describe, to others the inspiring preeminence of Jesus the Christ, and how Jesus brought with him reconciliation between God, and mankind. Life need for today's lesson. To applaud Christ's awe-inspiring preeminence for bringing reconciliation. Bible learning. Paul's description of Jesus Christ's supremacy and his position in the world. Bible application. 
to live a righteous life because Christ is supreme. Students' responses. Students will perceive the supremacy of Jesus Christ. The Church of the Colossians was under spiritual attack by principalities and powers of demonic forces, disrupting the flow of Christian services. It is important to note that the Church of the Colossians was not founded by Paul, but by one of Paul's converts from the Ephesian church named Epaphras. Paul desired to visit the Church of the Colossians, founded by Epaphras, but never got a chance, because he was in prison, in Rome, around 60 AD. The town of Colossae was located on a ridge overlooking the Lycus River Valley, in the southwest corner of Asia Minor, in what is now called Turkey. At the time of Paul's writings, the neighboring cities of Laodicea and Hierapolis were becoming popular commerce centers, while Colossae was declining as a center of commerce. Epaphras and Timothy however did establish churches however, in all three commerce trade centers. The founder of the Colossians church, Epaphras, reported to Paul that there were foreign philosophical, cultural, and religious issues infiltrating the church, and were dividing the church believers with spirits of confusion. God is not the author of confusion. Colossae was one of three adjacent cities located about 100 miles inland from Ephesus. The other two cities were Laodicea and Hierapolis, see Colossians 4.13 and 16. This area was a meeting point of Eastern and Western cultures. The cities were located on important commercial trade thoroughfares. At one time all three cities was growing and prosperous, but gradually Colossae declined in populace. It became a small town, yet the church there was important enough to merit the attention of the Apostle Paul. Interestingly, the church in Laodicea also received a letter from Paul, see Colossians 4.16, but the epistle to the Laodicea church was lost. All kinds of philosophies commingled in these cosmopolitan areas, and religious hucksters abounded. There was a large Jewish colony in Colossae, and there was also a constant influx of new ideas and doctrines from Eastern cultures bombarding the church. It was fertile ground for religious speculations and heresies. Many Bible scholars feel that Colossians is the most profound letter Paul ever wrote. Its compact style encloses a multitude of crucial themes. The apostle was responding to sophisticated spiritual threats that were attempting to undermine the healthy church that had developed in Colossae. For this reason, Phrases and terms that Paul used in his letter to the Colossians were packed with meaning that may elude some of us at first. This must not keep us from studying this wonderful letter, but we must be cautioned against a superficial approach to these chapters. Unless we depend on the Spirit of God to teach us, we will miss the truths God wants us to learn from the book of Colossians. Apparently some in the church were attempting to diminish the relevancy of Jesus, the Christ, his power, and his authority over the church. They were trying to downplay, or talk down, the significance of the achievements, and powerful works, of Jesus, the Christ, and all that he had accomplished, in his stay in this world, as a man in the flesh, the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, on the cross of Calgary and his permanent resurrection on the third day from the dead by God his heavenly Father, was a very important and significant achievement, and should not be ill-defined as mediocre and insignificant by anyone, like the Gnostics believers trying to infiltrate the church. So Paul wrote this epistle letter from his prison cell to the Colossae church, and sent it by a trusted messenger, named in the scriptures, Tychicus. The central theme of the letter focuses on Christ's superiority. Paul, in his letter thus set forth his case about Christ, and Jesus, the Christ's elevated position over all things, including all Christian churches. A commentary on Colossians 1 20 by F. B. Meyer entitled, Our Wondrous Privileges in Christ. It is not enough to receive the forgiveness of sins, we must be conformed to the image of a son who is himself the image of the Father, noted in Colossians 1.15. Notice the preeminence of Jesus, in creation, noted in Colossians 1.16, 
the preeminence in the church, noted in Colossians 1.18, the preeminence in the permanent resurrection from the dead, noted in Colossians 1.18, and in the great preeminence enterprise of reconciliation and restoration, noted in Colossians 1.20, let Jesus be preeminent in your soul today, he will do that for you and me today. Amen. Colossians 1.15 Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? No one has seen God, but Jesus is exactly like him. Christ ranks higher than all the things that have been made. Colossians 1.16 For by him were all things created, that are in heaven, and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones, or dominions, or principalities, or powers, all things were created by him, and for him. Through his power all things were made, things in heaven and on earth, things seen and unseen, all powers, authorities, lords, and rulers, all things were made through Christ and for Christ. Colossians 1.17 And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. Christ was there before anything was made, and all things continue because of him. Since Christ created all things, he himself is uncreated. This includes all things in heaven and earth, visible and invisible. All things are under his command. Nature reveals the existence, power, and wisdom of God, but nature cannot reveal the very essence of God to us. It is only in Jesus Christ that the invisible God is revealed perfectly. Since no mere creature can perfectly reveal God, Jesus Christ must be God. Colossians 1:18 and he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. He is the head of the body the body is the church, everything comes from him, and he is the first one who was raised from death, so in all things Jesus is most important. Christ is also the head of the church, the church had its origin in him, and today it has its operation in him, as the head of the church, Jesus Christ supplies it with life through his spirit. He give gifts to men, and then places these gifted people in his church that they might serve him where they are needed. Through his word, Jesus Christ nourishes and cleanses the church. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 25 through 30. Colossians 1:19. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. God was pleased for all of himself to live in Christ. Colossians 1:20. And having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself, by him, I say, whether they be things in earth, or things in heaven. And through Christ, God decided to bring all things back to himself again, things on earth and things in heaven, God made peace by using the blood of Christ's death on the cross. Christ is the fullness of God. Fullness was a technical term in the vocabulary of the Gnostic false teachers that were harassing the Colossians. The word meant the sum to love all the divine power and attributes. If Jesus Christ is only a man, or only an emanation from God, he cannot reconcile God and man. The holy arbitrator who can bring God and man together is one who is both God and man himself. Contrary to what the Gnostics taught, Jesus Christ was a true human being with a real body. He was God in human flesh, see John 1 14. When he died on the cross, he met the just demands of the law because he paid the penalty for men's sins, see 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24. Reconciliation was completed on the cross, see Romans chapter 5, verse 1. Colossians chapter 1, verses 15 through 17 summary. We look at this sun and see the God who cannot be seen. We look at this sun and see God's original purpose in everything created. For everything, absolutely everything, above and below, visible and invisible, rank after rank after rank of angels everything God started in him and finds its purpose in him. He was there before any of it came into existence and holds it all together right up to this moment. And when it comes to the church, he organizes and holds it together, like a head does a body. Colossians chapter 1, verses 18 through 20 summary. He was supreme in the beginning and, leading the resurrection parade, he is supreme in the end. From beginning to end he's there, towering far above everything, everyone. 
so spacious is he, so roomy, that everything of God finds its proper place in him without crowding. Not only that, but all the broken and dislocated pieces of the universe, people and things, animals and atoms, get properly fixed and fit together in vibrant harmonies. All because of his death, his blood that poured down from the cross. If you enjoy these quick study lessons, please encourage us by sharing this lesson and becoming a subscriber to our Gospel Works YouTube channel, won't you? Please let us, and the Microsoft Google world, as well as others, know your enjoyment today. You can do that by exercising simple faith and clicking on the thumbs up like button below. Thank you. Be sure and tune in next week. For the next preview quick study review of the coming Sunday school lesson study. Thank you so much. May God bless you and keep you safe. And make his face to shine upon you. As you gaze in heaven upon his face. Awarded with eternal life someday. Because of your simple faith. In the living word of Jesus Christ's.